Hi, today we're going to do a little bit more assemblage collage. Uh, yesterday on the Bisa Boutique's uh, creative group at Facebook, um, I showed a picture that I had done, oh, I don't know, 14 years ago or something on a bow tie filigree. And there was a lot of commentary on that. And since it's a stormy day and many are a little bit preoccupied with the weather conditions here across the east, maybe we'll have a sweet distraction and do a little bit of collage. I find assemblage and collage so relaxing and peaceful. I wish that I was able every day to do it all day long. So I would like to share a few of my techniques with you and maybe it will help you to find a little peace on a rainy day. I hope so. I wish that for you. And also the pieces sell quite well. So that's a nice plus, isn't it? Put a little money and time into it and it reaps a nice reward. People enjoy wearing these pieces as well. They always find them intriguing. And I hope soon to, sh to fill my shop here with a lot more of such pieces. If you want to zero in on this a little bit, Rob, um, this is a piece, it's not exactly like the one I made so long ago, but it's similar in feeling. So I am going to uh, take you over to the other side of the workbench and try and reprise this again. I can't lift this because I just made it. I'm going to kind of go over some basics of collage and glue technique. Even though we did this a couple of years ago, I'm going to show you on one of these filigree. And uh, we'll see how far we get in the time allotted. Maggie said this morning, go long, Brenda Sue. I want to see a long video. I want to be distracted from the weather. So <laughs> that won't be hard for me. I tend to go long. Some people don't like that. What can I say? Didn't you want to come to visit with me at my place? Well, let's visit. So here we go to the other side of the workbench, and we'll just have a little bit of fun collaging. Okay, so maybe you can see the piece a little bit better this way. When I looked back at the video we'd done so far, it seemed as though it was a little, you know, hard to tell what was going on. So anyway, this is the piece. This is actually the Russian gold plate. I think we have this in raw. We might have it in rusty too. I'm not quite sure, but if you type in bow tie filigree at the bsuboutiques.com website, I'm sure what we'll have in this filigree piece will come up. And we can always add more colors later. Um, this piece lends a lot of design opportunities as well. If you've noticed, I have not gone all the way out to the edges. And that is because these days people, um, I love brooches, but for some reason brooches just aren't quite as hot as a necklace. I don't know, maybe we all need to get together and bring them back. But you have hanging opportunities here. You can hang from these two holes here and make a really nice necklace centerpiece out of this. Or if you want to add a little bit of more uh, design to it, you can maybe hang a bit of chain here too. Some have done that. Maybe even graduated lengths like a shorter one and then a medium one, fine chain and then a longer one and then chain up here. That would be a really nice design and one that I'm sure uh, people would enjoy looking at and you will probably sell quite well. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can make another one of these on camera for you. I had moved it over. It is not quite dry yet. so. Anyway, as you see, I've started out with a piece of foam core board under me. For those of you that are looking for work surfaces, I've found that this works kind of good. And what we have done is we've coated it with packing tape, so it gives us something that we can uh, pick the glue up off of, and we're not going to be gluing to um, a piece of paper because that wouldn't work too well. Okay, so anyway, first I have this chocolate rose focal, and by the way, we do have a lot of them on the website. You'll find them in the chocolate ox section as well as in the brass roses section. As you see, I have a little turquoise bead here. And um, unfortunately, we do not carry these at the website right now, but you can take a head pin or a bead on a head pin and get a similar effect. This is a vintage rhinestone eye pin, a uh, head pin that I had. And maybe we'll get some more. I just haven't brought them in for a while because, to be very honest with you, they haven't sold very well. So, But anyway, maybe it's because I need to show you more what to do with them. Anyway, as you can see, I speared the little bead with this. Now, this piece is layered brass that's riveted in the middle. You can see there's a hole in it. So, I want to fill that. So, I'm going to push that down in there. And as you can see, now I have to pull it up. And then, I'm going to bend this over. 
and I don't want to wrap it around right here because that may interfere when I lay it in there and make it a little bit lumpy so what I'm going to do just press it over this way get the end and just kind of twist it around like that and then that way when I go to glue it um, it won't show a lot and it won't make this too lumpy but that's nice it's, it's pretty good and tight in there not as tight as I would like but tight enough you can work on that it's just a basic technique I always say you know I'll, I'll put the basics out there and then you guys improve on it because hey I don't know everything never said I did okay I have a little box of stuff here that I'm working out of we were talking about that weren't we Maggie was saying you know about putting stuff for projects aside so let's see if I put enough aside for this I thought I had another one of these. Yeah, I did. Okay, I'd like to have four of these. As you you can see, this is the Five Leaf Branch Stamping from Bisou Boutiques. We have this, I think, in just about every plating shade. This is the Green Patina, which we are discontinuing. You can do this with the Vintage inks over Brass Ox just fine, and that's why I just got to thinking, you know what? We don't need to have this plated this way. We're having some issues with the player doing it anyhow. So, But I, we have a lot of these left in stock. Last I looked, there was like 85. So if you want to use these in a project, come on over and get them. They're not expensive. And another thing you can do, too, with them is you can clip them apart in case you have a little tiny project. But this is what I'm going to do for this one. First of all, I'm manipulating it. I'm bending it. And I can do that with my fingers quite handily. And then I'm going to bend this part up just a little bit. So it will go with the curve of the piece. So, and I'll probably have to finagle with this a little bit once I get them all. But I have to tell you guys, for those of you who hasn't, haven't tried collage, you thought maybe it was um, beneath you because it was glue. Someone this morning just emailed me and said, you know, uh, I, I, people think that soldering is better. Well, you know, sometimes soldering is better. But it doesn't mean you're a better artist just because you can solder and that you solder all your stuff. It just depends on the project. For assemblage, many times glue is the better choice, especially when you get into little uh, pearls and things like that. You know, you're not going to be able to solder pearls into something, and you don't always want to put them in cups. So, you know, hey, there's times. All right, I'm going to start with this. this is my main pieces. I tend to start with larger pieces at the bottom. So this is my largest piece. Another thing you might want to do, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to go for the cleanup after because I didn't bring any blanks down here. But you might want to take and put a little, I don't know, maybe I do have one that I can use. Okay. Now this won't work because this is going to stick down and I'll show. You might, but to give you the idea, you might want to go get a little round blank and put right here because you're going to have, this is not quite enough and you're going to have some cleanup later. I'll have it with that. I'll have to go find a blank for that, but um, you can do it that way. It'll, it'll be okay, but you always want to make the, the backs of your stuff look nice and finished, and that's how you will do it. Probably um, after I've done that and this is all set up, maybe I'll show a picture on the Facebook group tomorrow or the next day, so um, be looking for that. And if you haven't joined us at the BC Boutique's creative group yet, Maybe you'd like to do that. That's at Facebook. And all you have to do is go find us, type it into the Facebook browser, and it will come up, and then you can request entrance because it is a closed group, and I have to click you in, but that's okay. We have, I think, 540 members now. Okay, so you can see how this is kind of sticking up a little bit, and they're kind of buttoning into each other. And I'm a little bit fumbly today because I'll be honest with you, the weather has me a little nerved up too. But um, there's no point in being over anxious. Sometimes going and getting busy. I could say be calm and carry on, you know. Keep your emotional um, level in a good place because it will sap you of your creativity. And that's just a shame. You don't want that to happen. Stay busy. Okay, so you can see I've done kind of an X shape with those. And they've all gone into the glue of each other. So they're quite secure, believe it or not. They are. And now I'm going to do some fill. Um, I think I'm going to put one of these. Now these were brass ox, and I put a little bit of the Vintage inks on these and scrubbed them back to get a little color in. That's a real quick, 
and easy way to get some color into findings is by using those. So as you can see, I'm putting it in there kind of sideways. These pieces, if we just have a little bit more time to fiddle with it on camera, they can be set sideways into a piece and really add some dimension. It's something you might want to play with. They're inexpensive. They're fun. See, maybe let's do that. And maybe let's get one going up here. I like movement. You can see how it kind of goes around. Movement. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now. And I'm going to do my centerpiece. So now I'm going to glue this in. And with this glue, you don't want to get too much, but you need to get enough. So there I go. I've got my centerpiece. Now we're home free because basically all we're going to do is embellish. Okay? Embellish and maybe add. Whoops. Okay, where's my... I get my tweezers to get that out of there. Okay. Um, maybe what I'll do is to show you the versatility of these pieces. You don't always even have to clip them. Sometimes you can just wiggle them off. I just took that apart. And I'll maybe stick this in here. And like I said, you know, I'm doing this on camera quickly. If I was taking my time, I might do it a little differently. But basically, I'm here to show you the idea. Then you take it and you make it better. And I tried very hard to choose things for this video that we have in stock. There's enough there that you can go get some and do this. And we are shipping this week. The boys are here. We're not expecting any kind of long power outages or anything like that here. I'm in Ohio. So, you know, I'm, you know, you never can say never, but we're not expecting, you know, a lot of the things that people are enduring in the East. So, you know, we're going to be able to ship. It's all going to be over in a few days, guys. Let's keep busy. Now, that's pretty, isn't it? I've got some really nice movement going on there. I like this. I like the shape of that. I may fiddle with it more once we're done, but I want you to get basically the idea. Now it's time to put the top dressing on, which are the little stones and pearls. Okay, we're going to have to pause for a minute because Rob has to change the battery, but we'll be, be right back. Okay, sorry about the interruption there. We thought we had enough charge on that battery before we started, but evidently not. So anyway, I've begun, as you can see, to set some little uh, old rhinestones and Tiffany-type mounts here. I have a little bit of this type of material on the website. I will have more in a few weeks. Right now, it's not much purpose in ordering them because back east um, is going to be a while before they can catch up, I think. Maybe toward the end of the week. We'll see. It's probably going to be a slow week for us. I don't know. We'll see. But I want you to feel good. And I want you to have something to do that makes you feel good. You know, even if you see this and then your lights go out, you know, you can get a lantern or a candle and you can do this by candlelight. Ooh, that's kind of nifty, you know. But what you want to do when you set this kind of material is um, pick it up with the needle nose tweezers and, you know, less is more, try not to get too much glue on it. And that comes goes to technique. It takes a little while, but you can always do cleanup. And if you're not sure you've gotten it all off yet, take a picture of it with a digital. And you will see where your glue is because the camera does not lie. And you'll be able to get it cleaned up. But see, that's basically what I've done. I think I need one more there to make me happy. I don't know. Like I say, once we get off camera, I may readjust and do something else. I'm just wanting to give you the basic ideas. Okay? Oops. And you always have that one stray one that gives you fits. Okay, and then what I would do after this because I want to show you something else after this, so I'm not going to do it now. As you see, I've got some pearls and stuff set around here. I have some on here. I may add some more of that. I'm going to put them on here, too. That's a little bit t tedious and time-consuming, but basically, you pick them up with your tweezers, and you get a little bit of glue, and you place them, you know. So, um, I'm going to do that later. 
but it's just, you know, you just basically go by eye. Think movement, think flow, think, you know, round or, or asymmetrical sometimes is good, you know. And as you can see, the E6000 glue gives you a little bit of play with the project, so for a while you can move things around, you know, you can look at it, get up over it and look at different angles, like you guys might be even seeing this a different angle than I am. So um, basically that is the way to go with this. So now I'm going to push these back, and I'm going to show you how I think out a piece. See, there's glue on the back of there, and I will deal with that later. Right now, I always keep a little uh, thing of toothpicks around to get my glue off of there, and I'll take and get rid of that later. But you want to always keep some toothpicks around to keep your surface, you know, as clean as you can. And then later, you know, I can pull that right off and. And I can clean that up. It'll it'll pull off. When you do the cleanup, you just be careful you don't pull too much off. That's why it would have been really good to have started with the blank first. So I would recommend, like I showed you, a little blank on the back of that filigree. You can collage the filigree just fine, but you do have to back it. And like I say, I will do that later because later's not too late. And uh, in a few days, um, I'll have a photo of that for you. Anyway, I was playing around. See if I can take this off here. And I was thinking, I love Mona Lisa. I have Mona Lisa on my website, and I had made this, put this in a mount not long ago. This is actually a mount usually goes this way, but I like to use it this way because sometimes I like to make a brooch. And in fact, I even did a video about this oh, a couple years ago where I collage up the sides of this, leave something hanging. But it's also a nice centerpiece, and one of my favorite pieces I ever made, which I made a long, long time ago, and I'll have to show you sometime. Well, it's in a, it's in a video. If you want to go back, you'll see it. It's a Mona Lisa necklace. But I thought maybe I would, I don't know if I'm going to glue it in place. Let's just think this out together. It's kind of like a puzzle. Okay, you start with this, and as you can see, it's kind of curved. This is our necklace blank. This is the big one from the website. You'll find it in the necklace blank section. Now, you can see it's like that. You're not going to be gluing to that. So you got to push it down. Maybe not all the way because you're going to want to put a little bit of curve back into it. But that's the nice thing about using E6000 glue. It has a little give, so you'll be able to. So I flattened that first, so I'm going to put her there. And then I thought maybe I would take... I like it like that. I always go for my big pieces first in a collage. And then I might put this here. And maybe that like that. And let's see. This, oh, I love these old celluloid buttons. Don't you just love that? I used to be able to find so many of these, but now they're getting a little bit harder to find. They certainly do cost more than they used to. They're little prizes from the 1930s. And you know, you can use that information when you're selling your pieces. Tell them, you know, I've got buttons from the 1930s in this. So we'll put that there. You have to leave a little bit showing on the end, or at least leave access to your hole, because you're not going to be able to make it into a necklace if you don't. Then I have a metal button which I hammered and flattened. A lot of people were doing those beaten buttons. And so I tried that one day and, and banged on a bunch of um, newer metal buttons. And I liked the effect. So I'm going to put this piece... Uh, I'm going to have to put it up so that I can get to the hole. And you can glue like that. What you'll do then is you'll glue stuff right in there. Uh, maybe I'll move this down just a little bit. You know, she can even be off-center a little bit. That's not, you know, as so long as your design aesthetic will permit it. Mine does. I like things just a slightly out of kilter. And these are those um, little vintage tokens, bus tokens and trolley tokens. Let's see, Moline City Lines, Rock Island, Illinois. These are old. We have these on the website. You can buy them. Um, maybe I will put this here. I like it good for one fair. Maybe I put that there. And then I have these, this little button. I might put that there. But I don't want to cover that whole word cinema. Be aware of uh, your motifs. So, you know, maybe I would switch this around. I don't know. Be aware of your, of your uh, design motifs when, 
whenever you're collaging, don't go over a good um, motif. You don't want to do that and lose a, a good design element. Now I've got a crack here, so maybe I would put this here like that. Now and then I would set my little rhinestones on the holes, maybe, like that. Yeah. And I got another place over here for another button. My hands are so shaky today. But you're getting the idea, right? Yeah, you are. Okay. And then, maybe from this hanging hole here, this is a vintage key. Beansy's husband told me what this was. He says that he thinks it's to an old cash register. Barrows. He deals in antiques sometimes. Or he used to anyway. So he knows those things. Um, so I've got that. So that's kind of neat. So what would you do? Well, um, you need some fill because you've got, you don't want to see, you don't want to see this blank. At least I don't like to see the blank. So what would you do? Well, maybe some leaves. You can stick in the cracks. That's what I do. Little pearls and stones, little flowers. I will put a, I will definitely put a stone in there. Uh, maybe some more of these, only the whole thing, you know, bent. Or maybe I'll clip some of these off. But I will make this so you will not see those holes when I'm done. Okay? And I'll look at it from all angles. I'll look at it from up here. I'll look at it from down here. And then, too, when the piece is done and all dry before I'll string it up, I will check the back and flip it over. And I'll make sure that I don't have a lot of glue seepage here or here. If I do, I'll get rid of it because you always want to make your pieces look nice on the back. Another thing you might want to do before you start using these pieces is you might want to hit them with a coat of Krylon's Matte Spray Lacquer to seal the brass. If not, you can let it go natural. It's not going to matter. It's on the back of the piece. It just gives it patina. Um, Another thing you might want to put here maybe is jewelry shield. You could do jewelry shield for people that you know think they might have an allergy. Um, usually people don't wear a big heavy necklace like this on bare skin, but just in case you could do that. Another thing you could do is sign it. And I can't demonstrate that here because I didn't bring my engraver down to the shop yet. But right here, probably what I would do before I start putting this together, although I'm able to do it after because I have a lot of technique from doing it in a lot of years, is I would engrave my signature and the date here. And that actually adds value to your piece when you do that. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of money for SIG tags, and that's fine because that looks real professional. But when you sign it by hand, I think you just give them a little piece of your heart. And it just makes it a little bit more special. And I know I've even had pieces returned to me. Hey, you forgot to sign this. <laughs> the the signature is a, a good thing, and it's important to people who like your work and want to collect it. So anyway, I hope that I've given you some good food for thought today. I hope you'll come over and visit us at Bisu Boutiques and kind of ruminate and wander through my findings. Maybe uh, you'll see something that sparks your interest there. We appreciate your patronage. Um, I love making these videos for you. I hope I've helped you to pass some time and give you a, a nice new design idea that you can use to make some money for yourself make a gift, uh, make a special um, piece for an outfit, whatever you want to do. Share the technique with a friend and have a great day.